The mind is the most interesting place that exists. It explains everything you need to know about a character. How they act, their philosophies, their ideologies, their happiest moments, and their darkest secrets. However, the psyche is an aspect of characters that more times than not tends to be overlooked. Instead, it's not the mind that the audience tends to look at, rather the practical side of things. It's what they do and how they act that gets them judged instead of why they do it in the first place. It's the topic of psychology versus practicality, how the audience views the characters and how the show executes on it. So let's look deeper into some of the characters. Let's first take a look at Adam and his mask. If I were to ask you, why does he wear the mask? There's one of two things you think of. One, the practical aspect. He wears it to cover up something. His eyes, a scar, he wears it for a practical effect. To hide something. Or, option two, the psychological. Humans think of him as an animal, and so he wears it to spite them. Or perhaps you believe both. He's hiding something as well as it being a message towards humans. But then I ask you the tougher question. Why does he never take it off? Why is he always wearing the mask? He can take it off whenever he wants, but he never does. He talks to Blake the love of his life with his mask on. Why was it only until the volume 6 character short that he finally took it off and left it behind? If he was hiding something behind the mask, why would it be now that he's chosen to let everyone see? The average viewer thinks practically that the mask was hiding something, but people tend to not think psychologically about it. To me, the mask represented human's hatred for Faunus, that the reason Adam always wore it was because he never believed equality would happen. The humans would always see them as monsters, and that's what the mask represented. Whether or not that was true, that was Adam's perception of reality. But at the end of Volume 5, the Faunus now turned on him as well. Now the mask loses its meaning. It was a symbol that the humans hated the Faunus, but now the Faunus hate Adam as well. To me, that's why he disregarded his mask. Now everyone is against him, not the White Fang. The mask has lost all meaning, so he must stand as his own person. The likely reasoning for his mask probably lies in a mixture between both psychologically and practicality, however only time will tell. So now that we've taken a look at one of the audience's most despised characters, how about one of their favorites, Crow? His alcoholism is an aspect of his character that I never thought would even have to be debated in the practical versus psychological side of a character. But even still, viewers believe that his drinking serves a practical use, whether it be nullifying his semblance or simply meant to make his character look cool. Viewers believe that it's there to serve an actual purpose, but the show has hinted otherwise. The death of Summer Rose seems to be the likely cause for his drinking. Alcoholism is an aspect of his character that shouldn't be brushed over so lightly. It is by definition a flaw with a character. There is no such thing as good alcoholism, but the audience looks for any and all reasons to justify why drinking all the time is an alright action to take. Drinking is an inherent weakness that plagues Crow's character, however when looked at from a practical standpoint, it either serves a purpose or looks cool. But psychologically, he's already a broken man. But shall we bounce back to the spectrum of hate to Whitley? Upon his introduction in Volume 4, no one thinks twice about the youngest child. The audience has a feeling about him. It's not unique and most come to the same conclusion about him that he reminds you of his father. It's what he is at face value that the audience looks at, not the psychology that has been trained to his nature. To me, it's hardly the person he is now that I look at, but rather the father who groomed him, the mother who was too drunk to care, and the sisters who looked after each other, but not their brother. The audience views Weiss as such a victim, but for whatever reason, Whitley isn't given that same courtesy. Yes, they're both schnees, but one was raised much differently than the other. Everything you need to know about who he is and the life he grew up in is laid out in the open for the audience to see. But it all goes unnoticed, and he's painted as the culprit instead of the victim. That is, of course, unless you take the psychological approach instead of the practical. However, the most conflicting feelings I have to this day resides in Yang. Volume 3 set her up to have one of the most psychologically damaged minds in the series, but ultimately it gave her a practical solution in the form of a new arm. Her stress was changed to anger, and her story followed a new path. 
a different path. While still set up to potentially work with new and untapped emotions, Volume 5 ultimately ended with a practical solution. She no longer cares about why her mother left. She's moved on. She doesn't want to understand what happened, she just doesn't want to deal with it in the first place. This plot wrapped itself up in a beautiful way, however my confliction comes in because of the change her mind faced. There have been no signs of her PTSD since her arm was returned. It was swapped for anger and rage. So on one hand, I despised the sudden decision to change what was so beautifully set up. But the switch turned into a more practical outcome, which was also very well done. Both are just fine, but it's the bait and switch that made me conflicted about the direction Yang was put into. Her mother Raven offered much more in the argument of psychology. Her entire character is based around her philosophies and ideologies, but it was ultimately simplified in a big way. The strong live and the weak die. A nice small and catchy saying, but her philosophies go much further than just this. The audience once again looks at her at face value. The fact that she's not the mother viewers envision in their head determines she's a terrible person. She left her daughter and that's what the masses gravitate towards. But Raven is a character that isn't meant to be looked at from a practical point of view. For a woman who was raised in a tribe filled with murderers and thieves who went to a school to learn to kill, all now becoming a mother, is a thought the audience isn't faced with. Instead, what's placed in front of you is a mother who left her daughter for her tribe, not even being posed with the question of what does family mean to Raven in the first place. The show antagonized and beat down Raven practically, when in reality, she's sympathetic psychologically. This topic of practicality versus psychology doesn't have a right or wrong answer. Both can serve their purpose well, but it's about picking and choosing when they should be implemented. Take for example that Adam topic I brought up. While I firmly believe that his mask being a purely psychological item gives him an incredible amount of depth as a character, the audience likely wouldn't respond well to something like this. They would feel almost cheated out of a mystery, like there's something relevant to his eyes that are being hidden, whether it be silver or holds a scar that haunts him to this day. But for characters like Whitley and Crow, these past events should not only make them sympathetic characters, but should ensure the audience know that as well. For those who are given philosophies and ideologies should not be simplified. There are always two sides to a character, so don't just view one.